stuck in my head. I keep the law just like I said. I ain't no zombie walking dead. I told life like Moses said. I got the law locked in my head. I keep the law just like I said. I ain't no zombie walking dead. I told life like Moses said. I'm a man now, it's true, no words and hands down I talk the talk, I walk the walk, I don't just stand around I make things happen cause I keep God first You get your job and some teach me about with hard work I'm a Israelite, that's right, I bring the truth out Don't know but y'all's laws come out, this is rude's mouth No lie, I'ma die for the most high And prophesy you how a shy's dead so by You can't want to repent your sins, you wanna know why The most high Lord, got the power to Lord, make the soul cry why you riding around town like you so That's fly? right. Or oh, Wolf of Spirits going down, you better choose your side. Wake up, you're the light. My people up, follow this one commandment, commandment in the Bible. It would eliminate black on black crust. It would eliminate your drug dealers. I got the law locked in my head. I keep the law just like I said. I ain't no zombie walking dead. I told life like Moses said. I got the law locked in my head. I keep the law just like I said. I ain't no zombie walking dead. Today, we are going to teach you your nationality and who God calls you. Give me that. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So according to the Bible, Christ said right here, said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Sis right here in the beginning. What do you think the truth is? You right there, yeah. <laughs> what do you think the truth is according to the Bible? You can guess. You can guess. Okay. You don't know? For who sins? The world sins? What world is he talking about? He's talking about everybody? Everybody. Okay. Okay. Give me Psalms 119, 142 to show you what the truth is. All right. According to the Bible, there's a certain way you study. You know, matter of fact, give me Isaiah 28 and 10. All right? So, if one thing in the scripture says in the New Testament, one thing, do you just go with it, face value? Do you just take it for what it is? Or does it have another meaning behind it? Depending on your situation. Okay, let's say depending on what the Bible says. Because, hold that, give me Proverbs 3 and 4. Lean not to your own understanding of the Proverbs chapter 3. All right. I'm y'all bringing out some good points. So we're going we're going to answer everything according to the scriptures. You got it? Yeah. Give me that. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 4. Uh-huh. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Psalms 3. No, I want Proverbs 3. Lean not unto your own understanding. Yeah, that's 3 and 5. That's that's Psalms. Proverbs 3 and 5. It's Proverbs, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Five, five. Verses 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. All right, the reason why I brought out this scripture is because what you said. You said, depending on your situation, right? So according to the Bible, it says trust in God and don't lean to our own understanding because our feelings and emotions can take us somewhere other than God, right? All right, so let's see how we're supposed to study the Bible. Give me Isaiah 28 10. All right, because you have to study a precept upon precept to get a full understanding of what the Most High is talking about. Give me that. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how you get the full understanding. So the question was, y'all said Christ came and died for everybody, right? All right, so let's deal with that. So there was a point I was going to make before that. Yeah, give me Psalms 119, 142. Give me John 316, okay? To show you what the truth is. Because you said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So y'all said that he came and died on the cross for everybody, right? Give me that. Psalm chapter 119, verses 142. So this is the truth right here. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. And God's laws, that's the truth. All right? According to the Bible, read it again, that last part. Uh, and thy law is the truth. So God's laws is the truth. So let me ask y'all this. Before we jump into the world and who Christ came for, right? 
Do we have to keep God's laws? Because it just said that. If you don't, will you be okay? You won't. So, okay, so you know you, what? You have to keep it. All right, all praises. Give me Romans 6 and 23. Then I'm going to ask you another question because you we engaging right now and you answer the question. I appreciate the participation. Give me Romans 6 and 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 23. Uh-huh. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, right? What we're going over is the, is the basics according to the Bible. Give me 1 John 3 and 4. Because the scripture just said the wages of sin is death. So if you don't want to die, you probably shouldn't do what? Sin, right? Now let's find out what sin is. Give me that. 1 John chapter 3, verses 4. Whosoever committeth sin. So the person who commits sin. Transgresseth also the law. The what? The law. Read. For, the, for sin is the transgression of the law. So we better be keeping God's laws, right? All praises. Give me Psalms 111 and 10. Now I'm setting it up for everything so you can get a good understanding, right? And then I'm asking you a question again. So y'all said dying on the cross, you can't bear everybody, right? After this, I'm asking another question. Read it. Psalm chapter 111, verses 10. Uh-huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Sis right here. What do you think it is to fear? Yes, you. How do you think you fear God correctly? How do I fear God correctly by respecting his law? i praise it, sis. Read it from the top. Uh, Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Read that last part. A good understanding. They uh, a good understanding. Have all they a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Alright, so a good understanding are all the people who do his commandments. Question. Do you think you can understand this Bible correctly if you don't keep God's commandments? No, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> what you say? All right. Do you think you can understand God's holy word if you don't keep his commandments? No. What about you, sis? What about you? No. Nah. Okay. All right. All praises. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Now, here, now here's when everything is going to change, right? Now, I want to see how y'all feel after I bring a law. Out, that you're all guilty of right now, but you don't know it. You don't know you're guilty of it. So I'm not. I'm not bashing. I'm just saying. Did you know this? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 5. Uh huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Okay. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Stop. What's a woman's garment? Woman's article of clothing. Anybody? Uh, skirt. A skirt. Dresses. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So now if I was out here teaching, wearing a skirt and some heels, how would y'all look at me? Don't take you serious. You wouldn't take me serious because I'm dressed out of order, right? Reading from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What's me a man's article of clothing? Pants. Pants. Read it again. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are abominations. Are what? Abomination. So, according to the Bible. Yes, ma'am. What's that? This is the Old Testament. Why'd you ask that question, sis? There has to be something behind you. Just don't ask that type of question. I will. Jesus died for the New Testament. So, so when Christ came on, give me Matthew five seventeen. So, are you saying that when Christ came on the scene? All of this, so you can sin now? No, no. But he made new laws. He made new laws? also, in the old days, they was wearing robes. Give me Exodus robes. 28 and 42. That's just like if you, listen, if you follow everything in the book of Leviticus. You can't eat pork or anything like that, so. It's a law. You're it's correct. It's a law, but it's in the, new, it's in the Old Testament. I should, great question. Now we're going to give you the understanding. Great question. So, since then we wore robes. Let's see if we wore robes as men. Give me Exodus 28, 42. Exodus chapter 28, verses 42. Uh-huh. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. That shall make what? Linen breeches. Linen breeches. You ever heard in the old school? 
child pull up your britches. You ever heard that before? What are they referring to? Your pants. Read it again. And thou shalt make them linen breeches Read. to cover their nakedness. To cover their what? Nakedness. What separates a man and a female? We got different genitalia. All right. So why do you think we would have to cover that up? Because we got certain stuff that y'all don't got. Read it again. And thou shalt make them linen breeches uh -huh. to cover their nakedness. Read. From the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. And who's supposed to wear these? Read. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons. And upon his what? His sons. His sons. So that does it read on. When they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. So it didn't say and his daughters. It said and his sons. All right. So according to the Bible, the Israelite men wore pants under their robes, their garments. You look like you got another question. What's, go ahead, sis. This is, this is, this is, we both in that. What, what you got? All right, so Aaron and his sons, they was basically the priests. They was the only people that go to, uh, the only people that was able to go to the house. Mm -hmm. So it's just for them or was it just for the house? So it was just for Aaron. So them. you know that Aaron, what tribe was he from? Uh, Think about, okay, okay. It's from the tribe of Levi. Okay. You ever heard of the book of Leviticus? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Right, okay. Levi. Moses, yeah, what yeah. tribe is he from? Same tribe, Moses, Aaron, brothers, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so this was a dress code that was changed before, give me Leviticus um, 18. So before this came about, right, we did, we did wear robes, like you said, but it changed. All right, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what. Give me Leviticus 18 and one. Leviticus chapter 18, verses one. Uh -huh. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them, Read. I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. After the doings of the land of Egypt. Stop. So what do you know about Moses? What is he famous for? Um, and who is his people? <laughs> the Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. So Moses, a Levite, he's a, from the tribe of Levi. He delivered by the hands of the Most High, the Israelites, out of bondage, out of where? Egypt. Egypt. So. Those 400 years that Israelites were living there, what do you think? What do you think they were doing? Living like who? After like Egypt, Egypt? Egyptians, yeah. exactly, sis. Read that verse again. Uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verses one. Uh huh. And the Lord spake. Chapter two. Uh, verse two. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt. Stop. So he says, I'm the Lord your God. So what is he separating? He said, after I freed y'all from the Egyptians, he said to the Israelites, I'm the Lord, your God. Is that, is a, is that a possessive word? Yeah. So, read, read on. Wherein ye dwell. Read, uh, read verse three again. Uh, after, verse three. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. So you not do. So we were living. You're gonna find them right here. But you asked, you asked if we used to wear, yeah, we did, until it was changed. You feel what I'm saying? Because we were living like Egyptians. Then he said, no, don't do this. You understand? Know you, you follow yeah. along? Yeah. All praises, yeah. sis. But you, you asked. Yes, man. You had asked. You asked. What, what John 3.16. You ain't addressed that yet. Yeah, I'm going to. I ain't forgot about that. You said uh, Old Testament, right? Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Uh-huh. Think not that I come to destroy the law. So, sis. This is Christ right here. This is Christ speaking. Because, first of all, you got to understand if you stand there for just a little bit more, that according to the Bible, if y'all can direct your attention to right here, according to the Bible, we are the Israelites. Our, identi our identity has been stolen from us. All right? They told us that we're Africans, but we don't know what country in Africa we come from. Africa's a continent, okay? We were brought here on slave ships. That's written up in this Bible. Right. We're going to get to that. But she said, that's the Old Testament. Why are we reading out of that? Read that again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Uh-huh. Think not that I come to destroy the law. So this is Christ. He said, all right, now that I'm here, because it was prophesied to come in the Old Testament. So he's finally here. It's like, oh, this is the Messiah that was prophesied in the prophets. He says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law. What does that mean? That first sentence, you says. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. All praises. Read. Or the prophets. Or the prophets who spoke about his coming. Read. 
I am not come to destroy, uh -huh. but to fulfill. But to fulfill. Give me Luke 24 and 44 to show what he came to fulfill. And we're going to go right back. Now, Isaiah 28 and 10 said precept upon precept, right? So when we read something face value, do we just stand? Do we stop right there? No, we did. We get a full understanding. Luke 24 and 44. Luke chapter 24, verses 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, uh -huh. that all things must be fulfilled, uh -huh. which were written in the law of Moses. That was written in the law of Moses, all right? But matter of fact, go to Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Remember Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, um, Numbers, and Deuteronomy? So let's go to Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Because he just said that was written in the book, in the law of Moses. So let's go to it, read. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, uh -huh. like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So what Christ is on the scene, he said, I can't do my will, but I can only do the will of the one who sent me, speaking of the Most High, all right? So he came to fulfill everything that the Most High told him to do that was written in the book of Moses. Now let's go back to Matthew 5 and 17, all right? And yo, the only reason I'm going to these different spots so you can just get the big picture. Give me that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Uh-huh. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. So we know that Christ did not come to destroy the law. Read. Or the prophets. Or the prophets who prophesied about him. Moses, Isaiah. Read. I am not come to destroy. He did not come to destroy God's laws. But to fulfill. To fulfill everything that was written of him before time. Read. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. till heaven and earth pass. Stop. You. Is heaven and earth still here? Is heaven and earth still here, sis? You can look around. <laughs> heaven and earth is still here, right? Read that part again. <laughs> For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. So, heaven and earth are still here. It hasn't passed yet. Read. One jot. One jot. One scratch. One tittle. Or one tittle. One minor thing. Read. Shall in no wise pass from the law. So it's not passed from the law. So what is that telling us? Even when Christ came in the New Testament, that the law still... It still stands. Read. Okay. All right. So yes, we were reading in the Old Testament all the way to the New. Yes, it still stands. Give me uh, Psalms 98. Because you got to understand, you will be judged. So y'all know when it's all said and done, Christ comes back, we're going to be judged. What are we going to be judged on? Think about it. If the law don't stand, what are we going to be judged on? Y'all get what I'm saying? Y'all understand? All right, give me Psalms 98. Psalms chapter 9, verses 8. Uh-huh. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. So when Christ come back, he going to judge the world in what? Righteousness. You, sis. What is, what is righteousness according to the Bible? If you don't know, just take your best track at it. By God's laws, hit it on the head. Give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all. No, 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 no. Just to do something. Nah, um, I want to go to church on Sunday instead of the Sabbath day. Oh! Nah, I want to eat pork. Oh! I want to eat, I want to wear pants as a woman. Oh! Read. These commandments before the Lord our God, as he have commanded us. So, now, let's get to John 3.16. So, we already know God's law still stands, right? Now, I'm going to show y'all something really important that the masses don't want you to know. And before you give me that, this is leading up to it, Isaiah 29 and 13. And I'm going to show you what. Direct your face, I mean your eyes to this image right here. Who is this person known as today? He's known as Jesus, right? All right. Is that true? Is that what Christ looked like according to the Bible? Yeah, but you know it's funny? Everybody always says that. They say, oh, I know Christ don't look like that. Then why do you accept it? How come nobody is in uproar? Man? Oh, that's not what, that's not Christ. But y'all say it all the time. All right, no problem. I'm not mad at y'all, but can y'all prove it? 
you now show me that that's not Christ. It's in the Bible, but would you be able to say, oh, I can show you right here, that's not Christ. Would you be able to show it? Not? All right, so today you're going to learn how to show that. But first, give me Isaiah 29 and 13. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. I know sometimes I could be long-winded, but it's just so you can get the full sense and understand. All right, give me that. Well, for the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me. So as much as these type of people that draw, that draw near to God. They say, oh, I feel sanctified with the Holy Ghost, all of that. Oh, I love the Lord. What? You won't do a thing he says. Read. With their mouth. With their mouths. That's called lip service. Read. And with their lips, do honor me. Uh-huh. But have removed their hearts far from me. But they removed their hearts far from God because, oh, I love God. But then you're on the club on Saturday, sleeping with this dude, that dude, getting high. Oh, I'm in church. I got my Sunday's best on. Read. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Give me in their fear towards me. Read, give me that. In their fear towards me. And their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. So, our fear towards God was taught to us. Direct your attention to right here. All right, this this bottom part. What is that? What's this right here? What? Slave ships. All right. So what happened to us when we got off them slave ships? Did we already have Christianity or not? You think? What about you? Did we were we already practicing Christianity, the religion, when we came over here to America, or were we taught that? We were taught it. Exactly. Now, keep that ideology, that understanding. Read that scripture again for the sisters, so they can get the six. Read that. Isaiah twenty-nine to thirteen. Isaiah chapter twenty-nine. Verses 13. Uh-huh. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, uh -huh. but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. By the precept of men. If you want to be a pastor, you got to go to what type of school? What's that? Yeah, seminary, Bible school. And who are they taught by? I'll answer it for you. The same people that raped your mama and burnt my dad. Right. The same people. That's right. That's the God honest truth. Our people were forced. We were, we were forced to eat pork. We were forced to bow down to the white man as God. So whatever they put in front of us, we accepted or we'd be put to death. We had no choice. But now the question is, did this Bible pre-exist? the religion we learned over here? Yes, it do. That's our heritage. Now, let's go to John 3, 16. All right? Because now you're going to understand why you would think it meant something else. But now we're going to give you the sense according to the Bible. Right. All right? Give me John 3, 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. Uh-huh. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him uh -huh. should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right. You sis. What that mean? Save us. Who's us? Everyone. Everyone. Every, every uh, race outside of Israel. Outside of Israel, even because even the Bible says adopted if you repent and you follow God with your whole heart you can say why would you leave him okay if he loves us if oh. we look the same I mean it's not like we different but if you repent and you acknowledge God as your Lord and Savior you can never okay what about you what you got <laughs> 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 John 316 what does it mean What do you say, us? Who are you referring to? Everybody who accepts him? Okay. What about you, sis? What do you think John 3.16 means? It's die for everyone. Okay. Okay. So, let's go to John chapter 3, verse 1. Because we got to get understanding, right? We got to understand who taught us the Bible. 
Who taught us the Bible? Who taught us this Bible? Uh, white the white man. What you got? Y'all too. What y'all got? Who taught us this Bible? The white man taught us the Bible. It's the truth, right? Read John 3 and 1. John chapter 3, verses 1. Uh huh. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The ruler of the who? Of the Jews. So who? He's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Read on. The same came to Jesus so, by night. So this guy came up to Christ by night. So, at 16, there's a dialogue, right? So who is the dialogue between Jesus and who? Nicodemus, and what's his nationality? He's a Jew from the tribe of Judah, from the, from the nation of Israel. All right. Jump up to verse 14. John! I'm, I'm only skipping through because y'all probably have a Bible too and you can read the stuff. But we're trying to get to the point. There you go. John chapter 3, verse 14. Nah, give me um, 15. Verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Alright, so whosoever. So y'all said whosoever, that means anybody, any race, right? Got it? That's two. Yeah, give me that. Acts chapter 2, verses 22. Uh-huh. Verse 21. There you go. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. So right now we're in Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Romans 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. So, all right, through patience, we can uh, get comfort through these scriptures, all right? So, right here in the book of Acts, this is nothing but a quote from what was written for time. So, it came to pass. This is regurgitation. Read it again. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who is whosoever? Who is this Bible written to? Who is it talking to the whole time? Is it talking to everybody or is it talking to the nation of Israel? That's, that's the type of questions we gotta now, we gotta ask ourselves. Cause who we were taught by who? The same man who guns our men down in the streets. The same person who had us in chains. Yeah, but the Bible is more So I mean, even if they, they taught it to us, isn't, they already talking to Israel. So what's the problem there? If we didn't know, now we know. We got the Bible and it, it talks about us. Us? As, who are we? Israelites. We're the Israelites. That's right. Have you ever been taught that? No. Well, yeah, by but, my pastor, my pastor back home. By your pastor back home? Yeah. All right, what, what day do y'all go to church? Sunday. 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 All right, so the main day is what? Sunday. Why is that? I, I wouldn't know. Okay, all praises. All right, so you were told you're an Israelite from what, what tribe? Uh, Israel. What tribe? Uh, Judah, I guess, yeah, she was saying Judah. You said she? Yeah, the lady. Can women be pastors? Yes. Yeah. According to what? The Bible. Well, I just actually read a verse that said, uh, unless you have children, you can't be a pastor. Something like that. It's in the Bible. I just don't know where it is. All right. So, first, give me first Thessalonians 5 and 21 and give me Timothy 2 and 9. Let me show you something. I'm sorry? We're in Thessalonians this morning. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. All right? So the thing that separates us from the Christian church is that if we ever say something, we're going to prove it with the Bible, right? That's the Bible we are in. King James Version. Okay. Bible, right there. So anything, 1 Thessalonians. Yeah, there you go, there you go. 5 and 21. So every time we make a point, it's going to be a scripture either before or after, right? So this is just, I'm sorry. She got a question. Can you just say what separates us from the yeah, us. We're not the Christian church, if y'all haven't caught on to that yet. We're the people of the book. We're the Israelites. The Christian church teaches you you don't have to keep God's laws. We're teaching that you do got to keep God's laws and the faith in Christ to make it to the kingdom of heaven. All right, give me that. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 21. Uh-huh. Prove all things. Do what? Prove all things. All right. I understand what you said, sis. Sometimes scripture slipped my mind, right? Believe it or not. I know for a fact that's not in the Bible. No? Okay. I do know that. All right. All right. And, and sis, we out here every Sabbath. And this is not, we're not, I'm not. Yeah, today. Today's a Sabbath, right. 
it, we're not enemies, sis. You're my sister. I love you. You feel what I'm saying? So, if you ever find that scripture, I want you to come here and show me that scripture. But it said, prove all things. What? Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. All right. So we all know that most sides not going to contradict himself. And I'm still getting back John 3, 16. Give me, uh, you know, Timmy. Also, what about the scripture that says, whoever has a heart, whoever has a business, is God with you. So even did that negate, like, women can't preach, but if they don't know what they're hearing and listening, a godly woman knows her role. She knows her place. And according to the Bible, there's a structure. It's God, Christ, man, woman, and children. So a godly woman would not usurp authority over a congregation that has men in it. Right. Because that's not according to the scripture. She's not the, the head, head, head pastor. But she's a pastor, and she's not supposed to be doing that. Give me the, give me, and I'm going to show you why. First Timothy, chapter 2, verses 11. Verses 9. In like manner, also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel, that's something our sisters don't know how to do today. Read. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Uh -huh. Not with broided hair, uh -huh. or gold, Read. or pearl, or costly array. Uh -huh. But which become women professing godliness with good work. Uh -huh. Let the woman learn in silence. Read that again. Let the woman learn in silence. When we bring out these type of scriptures, people get pissed. I can kind of see it. You know, the demeanor is like, what? This Bible says that? It does. Recall and read. First Timothy, chapter 2, verses 11. All right. If you got a Bible app, you can follow along. It says that. But the question is, how come I'm the first? Why am I just now hearing this? How come nobody does this? Because we were taught by who? The people who had us in slavery when we're the actual people of the book. That's right. All right. There you go. All right. Read 11 again. Verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence uh -huh. with all subjection. Subjection means to listen to men. Be subjective. And I'm going to show you that. Give me 1 uh, Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Hold this, we're going right back. Hey, so come to your house first? Yes. What's that chapter? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3. Uh huh. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So my head is Christ, all right? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is who? The man. Give me Ephesians 5 and 23. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23. Uh huh. No, give me uh, 22. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh huh. And he is the savior of the body. 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. All right. So go back to Acts 2 and 21. Uh, sisters, y'all probably like, wow, I can't believe it says that, right? So now I'm going to speak on the behalf of the men. For all these years, right, have the men been doing their job? Be honest. Have the men been stepping up, being fathers, providing, doing what they're supposed to do? In, the, in these last years? No. No. So when I we bring out the scriptures, I can understand why the sisters be like, what? Seriously? All right. What's up, brother? Okay? Okay. Oh, my bad. There you go. All right. So with that being said, today's a new day. If you want to be a righteous woman, you got to do thus saith the Lord. It doesn't say be submissive to an ungodly man. It's talking about be submissive to a godly man who loves the most high. That's right. You feel what I'm saying? He has to be more in tune with these scriptures than anything else. Your second nature is God first. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 7 and 28. All right? And then we're going to get back to the full picture. We just want to dissect everything because y'all been taught lies for years. So okay, now's so a new day. you have a relationship with God, God has told you uh, to 
do his work. I'm sorry, so repeat that, I'm sorry. I said, if you have a relationship with God, God has told you to do his work, so what you're telling me is, I can't be an evangelist. I can't, I can't preach. So, where did you hear that at? Jesus. All right, so anything you going to hear is going to be found where? In the Bible. So if you're hearing something else contradicting the Bible, that's of Satan. Just letting you know, sis, that if it, if it contradicts this Bible, how could that be of God? Give me up Malachi 3 and 8, 3 and 6. Let me look at it first. I'm going to bring this scripture out just so you can understand what I'm saying, sis. Three six. Read that. I want to wait till the sister gets her attention on this script. Give me that. Malachi three and six. Malachi chapter three, verse six. Uh huh. For I am the Lord. I change not. The Most High does what? I change not. He changes not. So what does that mean? If he says it, if he said that's the order, if he said the women are supposed to teach, is he gonna go against that? He's not. Give me First John three and eight. First John three and eight. See, we saying this because we love you. Now, if we didn't love y'all, I'd be like, oh, go ahead and live your life. Because I wouldn't care. But this is love because I want to see y'all make it when Christ come back. Give me first John 3 and 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. Uh-huh. He that committed sin is of the devil. So the person who says, you know what? The way I feel, oh, I feel something speaking to me, and it's not in the words. Read it again. He that committed sin is of the devil. Now, sis, the reason why you ask that question is because you need your question answered according to the Bible. Now, you can either take that, go study some more, get some more counsel, you feel what I'm saying? Or you can just walk away. But according to the Bible, God said it, it stands forever. That's right. All right. So, Acts 2 and 21. What they can't teach. What they can't teach? All right. Uh, give me that time. Is that three? That's three? Two. Two? Okay. It's talking about the age women. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. You're right, you're right. Titus, chapter two. But speak thou the, the things which become sound doctrine, mm -hmm. that the aged men be sober. Great. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.